The time has come to get back out and about for another pedal box road trip. This time we're going to Retro Rides Gathering at Shelsley Walsh. So it's been two years since we were here at Shelsley Walsh and we've just started the runs for today. And I've actually got the rover parked up in retro parking up on the hill, all the way up at the top, which is quite a cool area to be. Unfortunately, yeah. not really going to get to hang out with it very much today. But, <laughs> yeah. but we're going to take a wander around, see what's in there. Plus, we're going to talk to Adam of Living My Boost Life, who we spoke to a couple of years ago too, about his turbocharged comma van that he's brought along. <laughs>
So here with Adam, living my boost life, who uh, you might have seen two years ago in our Retro Rides coverage with a scimitar, and it didn't quite go so well. No, that was a broken diff and gearbox at the same time. It was both, it was both of them, yeah. You thought it was one or other no, at some was, point on the side, but I it was... I was lucky enough to get both of them in one, yeah. one smooth movement. <laughs> Go big or go home, and in fact, go big, and go fail home. to go big, and then go home. <laughs> so this year, you've obviously come back in the comma, yeah. uh, which I've been following on YouTube as well. There is a good build log of various things that have happened to this, because this is not a normal comma, as this little badge might give away. So, so what did you? What was it originally? So it's a comma wanderer. Uh, it's a seventeen twenty five Hillman engine. Okay. So it's the same as like a Hunter and stuff like that. Yeah. Detuned for the comma van. <laughs> They're fifty-eight because, horsepower. Because obviously it needs less power. Yes, yeah. Sure. So <laughs> fifty-eight horsepower, four-speed manual. Hey. Five to one ratio rear end. Oh. So it's absolutely screaming at speed. When you do eventually get there. Yeah. When you eventually get to, did it? I mean, did it do seventy? Uh, I had seventy out of it once. I timed the naught to sixty, <laughs> and it was thirty-eight seconds. 38 second naught yeah. to 60. That is horrific. That is bad. Ice ages have happened. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah so that's, uh, so you started in the Methozoic era. Yeah. <laughs> 60 was roughly last year. Yes. yes. Brill. Uh, but now it has been fixed. Yes. So be before I got to where I'm at now, I turbocharged the 1725. Right, okay. Through the car. Okay, so it's kind of always been a turbo. Yeah, so it went nice. totally stock, then I turboed the stock, the 1725, blown through the carb, got the 0-60 down to 20 seconds. But that's pretty good, I mean, that's is, almost half. Yeah, um, but <laughs> it, um, it was still a leaky, horrible thing that screamed right. at revs, so mm -hmm. that's when the idea came to just change engine, box, axle, everything. Yeah, so. just put essentially everything on top of better running gear and yeah. start from better and then go up again. Yes. Yeah, so this one now has... So it's a Saab 2.3 turbo from a 9000, um, the B234. Yeah, so that originally started about the, what, 150-ish? Power. Yeah, uh, horsepower? Oh, it was 175 it's in that one. Lowest. Oh, okay. Three turbo power. And that's with on. That's just wastegate boost pressure. Oh, so about fair half enough. Bar of boost. Right, um, and you have sort of tweaked it up a little bit from there, or have you just been you've been yeah. chasing a bit of reliability here and yeah. there? Yeah, so as it is now, it's drivability, I suppose. Yeah. Well, <laughs> TDO four nineteen T and eBay special turbo on it. Yeah. It's got one of them and six thirty cc injectors. Right. So it's still on wastegate pressure at the minute. So yes. It's probably only about one ninety horsepower. Oh, okay. But, but it's the, still up a bit. So. When the boost solenoid is <laughs> functioning properly, it yeah. should be close to 300. That's, that's the plan. Which is absolutely the right number to have yeah, in yeah. an old van. Six times more power than it had originally. But. And it can obviously carry six times more cargo at that point. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you can do the trip six times quicker. Yeah, it's exactly. perfect. It's maximum efficiency. What you want in a van is, is load capacity or faster load carrying. Yeah. It's all good. So, yeah, it's been up the hill, what, three times this morning? Yeah, three times. No issues? Uh, it was okay. Uh, no heat issues or anything. Excellent. I think, I've, I think um, the box is starting to slip in the higher gears, third and fourth. Right. But I just did the hill in second. And it was fine. Yeah, it's fine. Fair enough. Didn't need any more. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Uh, you know, you are in a van as you're coming up. If you've got a little tank yeah, slapping, oh, you ain't going to control Yeah, it. and it's still not exactly wide wheels no. anywhere. 185. I mean, they're 185. Van so, oh, tires. God. So, actual so van tires. Yeah, that's that's not a lot of contact patch no, it is not. For, for anything, really. Well, it's like a fail safe, really. If I, if I had more power, if I had more grip anyway, <laughs> I'd be able yeah. to destroy more parts. Yeah, basically. you run out of track. It's power limit. It's Sorry, it's wallet limiting. Yes, yeah. yeah. With, uh, with that, so yeah, so if you want to see more of this, you've got a Defender as well. Is it a, is series, series 2 series or is it 3? 2A, got... 2A. Uh, and obviously the Scimitar as well, and they're all kind of coming back to life. Or, well, this is alive, but yes. the others are coming back to life, which is all good. Uh, if you want to check them out on YouTube, it is just Living My Boost Life, all, it, yeah. Yeah, all up on there. They'll put a link in the description down below so you can check that out. Do subscribe, great videos, excellent person, and uh, yeah, we hope to see much more of this in future events. Well, Hopefully you will, thank you very much. No problem. Sir. Awesome going up the hill, and it's 
sounded great, so let's get back to more of the cars from the morning session going up the hill. We're over in retro parking now, which is where I stowed the Rover earlier. This is actually the first time that any of our pedal box cars have managed to make it to any of the events we've gone to. So, huzzah, I guess. It's not on the hill, which is a bit of a shame, but as I said earlier, it's just not quite well enough for that. So retro parking is kind of where everyone else parks up. Everything behind us over that way is club parking. So you've got like, you know, the Ford Club, the Young Retro Motor Club and so on. From here on that way, and there's a lot of it, is kind of everyone else. All the folks who just sort of rolled up on their own in cool old cars. So we're going to have a little bit of a walk around now and see what's about, and there's plenty of it to talk about. I think one of my favourite things about the Retro Rides events is I actually don't know what a lot of the cars are. There's some really, really obscure stuff. Like, obviously, we have Miatas, MX-5s, whichever you want to call them, depending on what side of the pond you're on. We have a beautiful, beautiful-looking uh, Lincoln Continental here, Mark V. Massive, massive yacht of a thing. One of the few cars here that makes the Rover look tiny, which is quite an achievement, I think. Um, all sorts of other stuff. We've got Calibras, Golfs. I think there's a Rover P5 back down that way. Another... Ooh, actually, I can't tell what Lexus that is. 
So yeah, we're just going to go for a quick up and down and see what's about in these two lanes. Unfortunately, there was a DB7 park next to me earlier and he seems to have cleared off. So he's, he must have been here for a, a half day. But yeah, it's one of those wonderful kind of events that you can have a Calibra and a Renault 19 parked up next to a Lincoln Continental and a pink MX-5 with a big spoiler. Just the variety of cars that wind up here is always amazing. And we keep saying this every time we're here. Just such a wonderful breadth of machinery. I was actually in one of the cars earlier getting given a lift up the hill so that I could sit by the, uh, by the S-Bend to get some video. No, no. And, um, well, I can't, I can't now. I'm actually going to find out what that is. For a Rover owner, I don't know much about my Rovers. It doesn't actually say it's just Rover 2000. Rover did that thing where it had a designation, but they forgot to ever like write it on anything. I do love a nice E36, especially a coupe, especially one that slammed with a big splitter. FDRX7, Harlequin Wagon. Beautiful, beautiful stuff here. I do love the RX7. I don't think I could ever bear to own one. The rotary just feels a bit too much of a gamble for me, but they are beautiful machines. I think they, uh, they appeal to the same part of me that the 944 does with that big, nice curved bay rear window on them. 911, kind of normal, unfortunately, by the standards of a lot of the stuff that's here. Some Vol- so, oh, not Volvo. Telling on myself there. <laughs> Angry little 190 here with a big stinky turbo hanging off the four cylinder. I don't know what engine it is. I don't know enough about Mercedes to say. But I do know that he's going to make a lot of choo-choo noises. I actually kind of hope this is for sale. I love the vibe. I can't buy it. <laughs> Little 5,000 pounds stenciled in there. I'm actually not even sure what this one is. That is not a logo I recognize. Oh, it's just, it's a Toyota. Is that like a Sora badge? The more you know. And if we flip around 180, another wonderful example of the retro rides contrast. We've got a 316 wagon right next to a Trans Am. Pretty much standard around here, it's amazing. We and I'm sure everybody that went to the event wants to make a heartfelt thanks to all of the marshals and everybody else who made this event possible. If you're interested, you can check out marshalling and do a taster day near you. Just go to the link in our description at the bottom or go to marshals.co.uk and have a look there. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell to get all the notifications when we put up new videos. Have a look at shop.pedalbox.show for merch and more. And have a look at patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow if you'd like to support us, our channel and the builds from as little as a dollar a month. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.